boys. You've just dialed in live to the center of the grilling universe. That's right. It's red hot and ready. And guess what? The parents are coming over. That's right, kids. The parents. Now's your big opportunity. Hit him up for that extra check. The Christmas bonus. Hey, you've been skipping class. It doesn't matter because we're cooking trout. And I'm going to be talking about that subject that nobody wants to approach. No, we're not talking about babies. We're talking about cleaning. I'm going to show you how to make your bachelor pad parent friendly. So hide the crack pipe, cover over those girly magazines, and take the bra off the dog. We're cooking for the parents. Okay hey guys, look, this is serious. This is deadly serious. The folks are coming on over. What are we gonna do? Well, obviously we're cooking dinner for them. We gotta show them that you've learned something in college, right? You know, the macaroni and cheese ain't gonna cut it. Okay, so what are truffles, guys? Truffles, well, there's two kinds of truffles. The truffles that the pigs dig up in Italy, okay? Those aren't the truffles we're using. We're on a budget here, okay? We're making chocolate truffles. These are gonna be great. In fact, we're getting right into the hard stuff, okay? We got beer and whiskey truffles, okay? First thing we gotta do is we gotta put our beer that's a third of a cup of beer. Uh, any amber beer, stout would work as well. And we got three tablespoons of whiskey there. Okay, throw that in. Grab yourself a spoon. Give a little stir here. We have the bottom here filled with water and it's boiling, heating up the upper bowl. Okay, so let's add our heavy cream in here. Stirring to combine quickly before it curdles in the alcohol. And we got some chocolate here. We got about half a pound of chocolate going here. This is bittersweet chocolate. And what this is going to have to do is melt and combine with the liquid. Then we're going to add the rest of our ingredients in. Let me grab a proper tool here. Don't do that. Okay, check this out, guys. The chocolate's melted down beautifully, okay? Let's add the rest of our ingredients here. We got half a cup of butter, and we're going to whisk this in. Not actually whisk, we're stirring this in, okay? We got a cup of confectioner's sugar. We're tossing that in now. And make sure it's combined very well, okay? We don't want any lumps in this. It has to be a very smooth consistency. See, for this job, I'm gonna bring out the whisk. Uh, I didn't want to use that whisk, but that's all we got, that's all we got, right? Okay, see, the sugar's dissolving. And the reason we use confectioner's sugar is because it is powdered and it will dissolve a lot faster. It's not gonna crystallize inside the chocolate we got melted. Let's check the texture now. That's about perfect. We're grabbing a non-stick baking tray here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour this chocolate out because we can't work with it at this temperature. We're gonna have to cool it down and the best way of doing that is by flattening it out on a sheet. It's gonna cool a lot faster than it would because it's thin, right? Okay, just spread it out. And that's gonna take probably two or three minutes just to uh, come to the proper temperature that we can work with it. We want it to arrive at the consistency of, you know, baby crap, you know, very fudgy, you know, before we can start working with it. You can see, check in close here. It's almost sort of starting to form a little bit of a skin on it or something, you know? Wait, that's not right. No. And welcome to the future. What we have here is a half-hardened chocolate mess here on our plate, okay? Check it out. It's kind of gummy. This is where we want it. I actually threw this in the refrigerator for a few minutes just in order to get it to firm up a little bit quicker, okay? This is what we do. We dig out a little piece and we roll it in the palm of our hands. Do it quickly, get it back there because the heat from your hands is gonna melt this chocolate down again, okay? For some reason, this stuff doesn't stick to the latex. Stick to the latex. You are so, so, <laughs> so dirty. We got enough here to show you what's going on with this, okay? We got six truffles here. At this point, I'm bringing in the cocoa powder, right? This is gonna dry it off somewhat. It's also gonna give it an extra kick of chocolate and caffeine. From the cocoa, toss it in the nuts. Check that out, that's beautiful. That's gonna be fantastic. Actually, I should try one of these babies right now. Mm. These are great. <laughs> beautiful. So let's coat the rest of them quickly. Into the cocoa, into the nuts. 
And because you've gone so far out of your way to do something so special for your mother, you're going to get that big Christmas bonus. And you know what that means? You can now afford that fantastic new video hockey sex librarian game, right? Librarians and their knickers, woo, yeah, playing, getting them in the boards. Oh my God. Okay, Cracker, check one of these babies out. There you are. Okay. Oh man, that's really rude. He picked that up off the floor and he ate it. Ten right. second rule, man. Hey, Cracker, where you get that chocolate? Doggy drop it? <laughs> Guys, what we have to do is we have to throw these into our refrigerator. They cannot sit at a room temperature for too long, otherwise they're going to start melting, and they are really going to look like French truffles then, aren't they? Okay, I'm going to pass these off to our culinary tigers in here. Hey guys, here we go. And guys, when I come back, we got Cracker, a stomach pump, and a trunk full of household solvents. All right, so your parents are coming to visit and you want them to think that you've left your frat years behind you. Well, first things first, take that sock out of the goldfish bowl and you know those dirty magazines? Well, hide them in your closet. All right, now it's time to get cleaning. I know a lot of guys think cleaning can be a little bit wussy and pretty confusing, but with a day a week and the right tools, you can have an apartment that mom will be proud of. Stick with me because today I'm gonna show you how to make your apartment girl clean. From Hamburg to your burg, it's all about the meat here on Red Hot Ready. Okay, this is a portobello mushroom. What we're doing with this today is we're gonna stuff this baby up with some sausage stuffing, okay? We're taking the base off here. This is a little bit woody. The top part isn't so bad, but the bottom part, you can see, it's covered in whatever the hell they grow this stuff in, okay? I think it's like a combination of horse manure and, you know, pygmy entrails or something. Uh, I'm getting dizzy. We're gonna chop this up. We're gonna add it to our stuffing, but we're pre-cooking our stuffing here, okay? That way, you know, the mushroom doesn't have to get overcooked before the stuffing is all taken care of and warmed up and heated and cooked and stuff. Let's grab a little bit of oil, put it in the pan. What do we got here? We got some raw sausage meat. Put it straight in the pan. That's about six ounces of that. So you stir it around a bit. Let's get it flattened up. Otherwise, what's gonna happen when this cooks up, they're gonna stay in big chunks, you know? It's not gonna be a even distribution throughout the stuffing. To that, we're gonna add our shallots. We got one whole shallot. Very sweet little onion, very common in France. Getting more common in North America, thank you very much. We'll add our smoked sausage in here as well. Starting to get a little heat there, you can see it sizzling. We're gonna add some dried thyme to this. Lots of cracked black pepper. I love this stuff. We want something fairly spicy to accent it, right? To bring the whole thing together. Got some nice heat here now. This isn't gonna take long at all. It smells good. We're gonna add our chopped in mushroom stalks, okay? So take this right off here, straight into the pan. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit of salt here as well, some sea salt, but we're not gonna put too much in because there's a very high sodium content in here. I'd like to see a little bit more oil in here too because we're gonna add some breadcrumbs and the breadcrumbs are gonna wick up all the oil in here. It's gonna be too dry if you don't add it. These have been toasted off nicely. Straight in. A little bit of parsley that we're adding at the end to the saute here because had we added it in the beginning, it would get kind of limp, brown, discolored, you know, un unappetizing in other words. Okay, this is just about ready to go. Very nice indeed. Okay, come on over here. Just gonna take this straight out and spoon it on top of our mushrooms. Okay, one of the reasons I'm doing a sausage stuffing for these mushrooms is the whole time I was growing up, I'd wake up in the middle of the night and all I could hear was my mother screaming at my father, give me some more sausage, give me some more sausage. We're no longer going to hell because hell don't want us anymore. This will probably be a nice little memory for them, you know? I'm not sure if they've been uh, having a lot of sausage lately, so. Oh, that's nice. And gentlemen, for the main course tonight, we got stuffed trout, right? Got a nice three and a half pound rainbow trout here. Still fresh. You can tell how fresh it is because the mucus is still dripping out of it. Check that out. <coughs> I'm gonna take some sea salt, toss it inside the body cavity, just like that. A little bit more cracked black pepper. Here we go. We got some chopped dill here. Got some chives right in. Some chopped garlic because fish doesn't smell enough already. That's funny. And we got some 
very thinly sliced lemons. This is another thing that sort of brings back memories of childhood for me as well. You know, because when she stopped calling for sausage, she said, well, just give me the bacon, baby. <sighs> Hot stuff. Throw our fish on, like so. Roll these pieces up. A Little bit more pepper. Let's actually slide this down here so the uh, tail gets nice and moist as well, right? Because if you're gonna get some tail, you want it moist. Don't film me, film him. Put this up together. Make a little bit of an envelope. Pinch the ends to keep all the juices in. Okay guys, when we come back, we're hitting the grill. The fish is going on and I'm slipping them the sausage. Filled mushrooms. All right, boys, we are back, and we're talking about getting your place girl clean. Now, I know that you think that just because you have a little path clear between the couch and the television that it's all good. No, that's not gonna cut it, and your parents are not gonna be impressed either. So, first things first, make sure you clean up all the garbage around your apartment and throw it out, because you can't clean your apartment if you can't see it, right? Always clean from top to bottom, because dust is gonna fall, dirt is gonna fall. So if you clean the floor first, it's gonna be a mess, because you're gonna have to do it over and over again. So make sure, top to bottom. First thing is the windows because they are near the top and you need clean windows to see that hottie across the way. So you're going to either use window cleanser and scrub the windows or you're going to use vinegar and just a crumpled up piece of newspaper. The vinegar needs to be diluted about one part to five parts. So one part vinegar, five parts of water. You're just going to dip your piece of newspaper in the solution, scrub the windows with the newspaper and you're going to see that hottie very clearly in no time. Next, you need to clean your surfaces. Now, surfaces just means your counters, you know, your desktop, things like that. Now, you're going to use a nice lemon cleanser of any kind, but you're going to need to dilute that too. Just make sure that you always follow the directions on the cleanser and you'll be fine. Dip your cloth in and make sure you get all of the areas, all the nooks and crannies. You have to make sure that you pick everything up and clean underneath. You can't just clean the open surfaces because that doesn't work. You don't get all the crap because usually the most disgusting stuff is underneath things and in those little corners. So you have to make sure that you get everything, clean it really well and it'll smell beautiful. Next, we're moving on to the abrasive cleansers. Now, these are used to clean things like your sink, your tub. And have you ever wondered why your girlfriend won't come over for that candlelight bath even promising her? Hmm. It's because of the green scum around the tub. No one wants to get in that. That is nasty. So, you take an abrasive cleanser and a piece of steel wool that looks like this, and you scrub all that greenness out of there <laughs> because that is really disgusting. And when it's nice and clean and it's shiny and it smells good, she will be over in no time. You don't have to worry about it. Next is the broom. We're moving on down to the floor. And you're gonna sweep up, make sure you get all those corners, make sure you get all those dust bunnies, put it in a dustpan, and throw it in the garbage. The last thing that you're gonna do, you're almost finished, you're almost there, is to mop. Now you wanna make sure that you mop two times. Once with hot, soapy water to kill all those bugs and get all that leftover spilled beer on the floor off. And secondly, you wanna make sure that you rinse. And both times you wanna make sure that you squeeze all the excess water out of the mop because having a flood is almost worse than having a dirty floor. You know that nasty stench that's been in your apartment from that dirty hockey gear? Well, up next, we're gonna show you how to get rid of that stench and all other nasty smells. It's all about finding your inner caveman here on Red Hot and Ready. We're smoking it, chopping it, slashing it, grilling here on Red Hot and Ready. All right, boys, your apartment looks sparkling clean, and now you need to get it to smell the same way. And all you need is one thing, baking soda. It works like magic. Just take a box and put it in your bathroom behind the toilet, put one in the closet with all those nasty smelling sneakers, and put one in the fridge. It sucks up nasty odors like magic. It's great stuff. Now, I know that there are some guys out there that are just never gonna clean, you know? They're just accustomed to the mess, and they just really don't care. Yeah, what are you looking at? So if you're one of those guys and you're getting totally hassled by your girlfriend or your parents, then there's one easy thing to do. Pick up the yellow pages and call somebody to help you out. Guys, I have been very busy, okay? And look what I've been doing. We got some roasted corn here. This is gonna be going into a sauce for our fish. We got some potatoes here. This is the starch for our meal. And this is the fish. It's going on the grill. This is going on medium heat. I'm gonna take the corn off here. Oof. I'm going to close this down. We're going to cook this out of about 350 degrees in here. So that's going to stay in there for about half an hour, 35 minutes, and it should be perfectly done then. Just a nice medium. 
I've taken my corn off here. What's this for? It's for the sauce for the fish. We're gonna make a corn, radish, and watercress sauce. Got some butter into our hot pan. We got one bunch of watercress. That weighs about four ounces, okay? Four ounces in weight. Stir it around. We don't really need to go too far with this, right? We're not trying to make it totally limp and soggy. Okay, we're adding some shallots to it as well. That's that small reddish sweet onion. Because it's fresh, baby. We've got a little bit of water at this point. And we got here a little bit of cracked black pepper. We don't have to add too much of this because watercress is a really peppery lettuce. A little bit of salt here. That's ready to come off. We're going to throw it straight into our processor. Mmm. Got that there. So we're going to puree this up and it's going to coat the other vegetables. Okay, so that's just about right there. Let's take a look. Okay, still a little bit leafy. If you want to come in here, take a look at that. Pretty damn green. Right. Off here and into the bowl. Remove your blade first. It makes it a lot easier. Okay. And into there. Ah. We're just going to slice this off here. This was on the grill for about half an hour or so. We parboiled it in the kitchen. And this is nice and tender. Okay, straight in here. We done? Okay, and the radishes? No, we're not done yet. Straight in. Let's toss this up. Mmm, that's gonna be great. I'm gonna big bore and steal a little bit of this lemon juice from the next recipe I'm gonna show you. Add that there, a little bit of acidity. That's gonna blend with the lemon that we have inside our trout. And mom's in the palm of my hand. You know that's not gonna happen. Let's see what we got cooking in here. We don't wanna be lifting this up too much because the trout is sort of cooking like it's an oven. We got our potatoes here. So I'm gonna take these off quickly. I'm gonna let these cool down slightly. We're gonna use these a little later on. We're gonna make a stuffed potato thing to go along with our trout. But I gotta get these mushrooms on right away because we're gonna cook these in relatively low heat along with the salmon, okay? It's gonna take at least 20 minutes for these puppies to cook up properly, okay? That's going to be at least half an hour, okay? So I'm going to come back in a little while. I'm going to pull it in my pan, shake it around, do a little dance, take it off the fire, get back in the house, do it again, call my mom, tell her not to come over because I'm sick! I kind of like the one where you pulled it out of your pants, did a little dance. That's funny. It's all about fun. You're in a caveman here on Red Hot and Ready. Okay, guys, I'm having serious second thoughts about this. I don't know if this is going to work at all. You know, I'm going to be poor, starving, student forever, right? If you believe that, my name's John Pritchard and I am on a cooking show. Well, don't look at me like that, it is, I think. We're taking the potato out of the potato, right? We're leaving the skins. We're gonna throw these back on the grill and get them all crisped up. Straight in, leaving just enough potato in the skin that it's not gonna just collapse when it goes back on the grill, crisp up and rip up like a piece of old paper or something. But it's more dramatic that way. We got low heat on this side, right? Otherwise, we're gonna burn the crap out of these skins, and that's no good. We wanna be able to chew right through them, pick them up, just slam them in. Close back down. Fish is looking good. The stuffing's coming together. Beautiful. Obviously didn't like that. The bus is leaving. Okay, got our cheese, half a cup of cheddar cheese. We got some butter. We got about four green onions sliced. Got about three or four tablespoons of mint which is why we're calling it minty potatoes. That's curry powder, half a tablespoon. Got some lemon juice. We're gonna put about two tablespoons in there and we got some chicken base. This is just chicken flavor base, like one of those bullion cubes that you get, except it's in powder form. Put a tablespoon of that in. And we got just a little bit of warm milk. Say about, say one, two, three tablespoons. And we got this crazy space age masher here. We're just gonna mash it all together still in the debate mode about the parents, you know? What do you think, should I call them up? Should I send them back? Should I tell them to come over, or what? Eh, they'll come over. You're like, you're like that. You think I will? I don't think I will. Yeah. Think I'm gonna, nervous though, but... I'm, I'm gonna get any cash out of them? Nah. Then why am I asking them over? They only gave birth to me. Because you're a nice guy, John. I'm a hell of a nice guy. I'm a hell of a nice broke guy. Send money. Okay. 
Let's take these back off quickly. We're powering through this because they got about half an hour, you know, traveling, and they probably left already. So the option of calling them up and canceling is pretty much out the window now, isn't it? Oh, that's nice. I'm just going to scoop about two or three tablespoons of the potato filling back into each one of these things. This is going to be great. When the heat hits it, the cheese melts, and when the cheese melts, I'm happy. Hell, if they don't come over, I'm just going to sit home, eat these, light a rock up, sit back, relax, do some knitting. And then my brain went, yeah. and I realized I was 35,000 feet in the air and I was watching cars on a highway. Did I say that? No. Okay, straight back onto the grill, guys. At this point, I'm just going to crank it up a little bit because I want this to happen quickly. What's that time thing? Oh, you mean time traveling. Parents coming, got to cook. Parents coming, mama's coming, mama's coming, mama's coming, mama's coming. What's going on with you? Mama's coming, mama's coming, can't talk, got to cook. Mama's coming, what are you talking mama's about? Coming. Mama's John, your parents are on vacation. They're not coming until next week. What week is this? The wrong one. Mama's not coming. <laughs> mama's not coming. You know what that means? We what can eat mean? this all ourselves. Look, look at this, And you know what? What's that, baby? It doesn't matter anyway, because your mom likes the old sausage. <laughs> I know. That's what makes it so funny. Hey, look. You know what else my mother likes? My mama likes a nice big stuffed fish. Oh, my God. Come to think of it. This is amazing. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a beer and whiskey truffle. Mm. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> mm. Hey, what are you looking at? Yeah, Mama's so fat. <laughs> well, she sits around the house. She sits around the house. Ha ha ha. That's not so funny from a headless fish. Uh, oh. oh. Well, Mama's not coming, huh? Well, what do you say? You lend me five bucks. No, I lent you five bucks last week. Well, that's because I'm red hot and broke again. And we're the home of smoky goodies. 